As gardeners, it's important to know what a healthy plant looks like. It's really important to be familiar with what the structure and shape, the color, normally looks like in a healthy plant. So this agave weberi is showing very upright stature. That's very typical for this plant, but we have some in our landscape that look a little bit different. So this agave is the same species, but it's got a little bit different structure, it's starting to fold in on itself, and there's actually a little bit difference in color. And we noticed this a few months back, and this is actually characteristic of some stresses that the plant is undergoing. So this could be too much sun, too much water, not enough water. There's a lot of factors to consider. But something unique to our agave in the southwest is agave snout weevil. And this is a challenge that we face here because once they're present, they pose a threat and actual death to the plant. So we have a few things that we need to look at. We always start with the least toxic method of any kind of approach that we have for any pest we're dealing with. But with these specific pests, you really have to step it up to a systemic insecticide. And imidacloprids are the active chemical used that we use to some success, but it's a systemic that is treated. We drench the root system. It's taken up into the plant tissues. So these weevils will be consuming tissue that now has the chemical that will kill them. We do have to be mindful when we're using this though, because it is a neonicotinoid or neonix as they're abbreviated. And these are really damaging to pollinators in the ecosystem. So whenever we do these, we wanna make sure that the plant is not going to flower and send up a bloom stalk. If it is, we'll cut it off because this is carried throughout all the plant material including nectar and pollen, and can be passed on through the food chain. So we were very mindful also of the plants surrounding the area. If we had any shrubs or any perennials that were gonna bloom in the active period that this chemical is present, which is sometimes up to six months, we wanna cut those bloom stalks off very methodically so we're not passing this up into our pollinators' food systems. So another thing that we've been doing is there's research in Mexico to use some traps that anyone can buy. It's just a general wasp trap and we bait it with either rotten agave core from a plant that's already died or old pineapple, basically fermenting fruit. And that scent draws them into the trap and it needs to be filled half with water. And then we can see where these uh, insects are moving and know where to target some of our plants before they show signs of damage. So some early symptoms of agave snout weevil will be the lower leaves starting to look a little dehydrated toward the base. They'll be a little wrinkly. And if you apply water to those plants and within two or three days they don't plump up, that's generally an indicator that you do have agave snout weevil feeding on this plant. At which case you probably will need to consider if the plants were saving and if it is, then look into some systemic insecticides for them specifically. Uh, the next step will be having just the, the apical meristem, this very central growing point, remain upright and all of the rest of the leaves leaves falling down to the ground and looking flattened. At that point, the plant is beyond saving and it's best just to harvest everything, look in the soil, get any grubs and beetles that you find and, and remove those, and then consider treating any surrounding plants if you have other agaves because they will move from plant to plant. And that's why we're using some of the traps to see where they're present and if they're moving around from different species that we have seen them on. So unfortunately here you can see that we've lost some of the plants and these are just the pups that remain. So we will have to consider treating these plants if we wanna preserve them. Uh, we have such a diversity of plants here that we do need to consider all possible treatment methods if we do have pest problems. So we are uh, a great resource for you. Feel free to contact us online or by phone and we're happy to help you with any questions specifically.